Young people from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. They're doing their part. Are you? Because you goddamn should be. Starship Troopers Extermination is flat out the best movie to video game adaptation I have ever played. In fact, it's so good it's genuinely killed my personal desire to play Deep Rock. Something I never expected to be saying considering just how bad the competition tends to be in the horde-based shooter genre. Yes, I am looking at you, Dark Tide. Unlike Dark Tide, which launched in a frankly abysmal state that delivered on practically nothing they promised, Starship Troopers Extermination has launched into one of the best early access experiences I've come across in any genre, whilst boasting a truly ridiculously addicting gameplay loop. And I truly, truly do hate myself for the lack of desire I have to play Deep Rock Galactic after playing this. Don't get me wrong, I bloody love Rock and Stone, but there's just something so glorious about Deep Rock and Squad having a baby together, but with a Starship Trooper twist. I'm doing my part too. I'm completely at all with how well produced this game is. From the virtual effects being of such marvelously high quality that they almost appear angelic, the all consuming meme culture surrounding this title. Come on, you hate! You wanna live forever? To the community, of which is admittedly kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Alright team, we're gonna secure the very important thing that the general wants, because... <laughs> the fuck? Even so, I love the players in this game. Half of my enjoyment whilst playing was listening to all the references to the films being made. The only good bug is a dead bug. I'm doing my part. The music ain't too shabby either. Now outside of the meme culture, the gameplay loop consists of mining, shooting, running for your life, and meandering around by relaxingly building a new home for your fellow troops. Just like in the film. Until it's no longer relaxing. Just like in the film. Oh God! We're gonna die! Don't you understand? We're all gonna die! <laughs> In fact, it becomes quite tense all of the time. If you're looking for a frantic horde shooter that somewhat crosses over a plethora of genres whilst allowing up to 16 players in each match, then at the moment there is honestly no better game out there. Admittedly, however, the side quests are not that great. But in fairness to the developers, the open world of each mission is insanely detailed, and the side missions are good enough. Especially when you take into account the fact that some of them do allow you to unlock secret weapons such as rocket launchers. It's fairly safe to say that so long as they don't over monetize the shit out of extermination then it will be one of the best horde shooters ever made. I mean who doesn't love a game where you can immediately gun down your teammates on accident? Just like in the movie. When I say that everything about this game is pretty much a one to one adaptation of the 1997 classic, I mean it. Almost every aspect of the game is inspired by the film in one way or another. In spite of that fact, the team behind it have managed to put the video game first during development. Sure, you can pay your respects to fallen soldiers just like in the movie. Sure, the enemies are identical. The base building is inspired by a scene in the movie, and pretty much everything is inspired by the movie. However, this is a video game adaptation of Starship Troopers that puts the video game first no matter what and it pays off. Whether it be because you can tell the game was made by insanely passionate developers or just merely because the game is a delight to play. I have almost nothing but positive things to say about it. You truly have to be one of the most boring people on the planet to not love a game where you can have a deployable nuclear bomb. But what about the classes and their abilities, I hear you ask? Well, they're all 
thoroughly enjoyable experiences and distinct enough to the point where the minor overlaps between them don't account for much. After all, the game's class system is fairly simple. You have the Hunter, aka the fast-paced class intended for crackheads who don't have any patience, like myself, with their class ability being a jetpack and the main stage weapon only being unlockable at level 13. You have Bastion? No, not that Bastion. We're talking about an actually good game here, aka the heavy class of which has an LMG that's damn near unusable due to its utterly vicious recoil that would be a major issue if it weren't for the class ability that clamps you down into one place and allows you to left click until you run out of ammo. Something that is going to happen a lot with the LMG specifically, at least if your teammates aren't placing ammo caches down consistently. If there's two adjustments that need to be made to this class in particular, it is most certainly the lack of ammo available for that sweet, sweet LMG along with the delay between wall placements being a tad lower. Although both the Hunter and the Bastion only suffer from minor issues, the Operator class, of which acts as a support class, is unequivocally fucking overpowered. Perhaps it's because Offworld Industries thought no one would play support without significant incentives, like with what happened in Overwatch. However, I fundamentally disagree with an immense amount of decisions with this class. First of all, Operators unlock the Hunter's main promotional weapon at level 2, whilst they have to wait until level 13. Second of all, they weirdly get the grenade launcher, but the heavy class does not. And last but not least, the operator class is able to carry two canisters of gas, but the heavy class cannot. In my mind, the support class should be good, just not this good. There is absolutely discourse to be had surrounding whether or not people agree with me on this topic, but personally, I don't think the support class should be nearly as good as it is. In its current form, it definitely seems far far more powerful than the other two classes, of which are damn near perfectly balanced against each other. You know, Deep Rock Galactica may have rock and stone, but Starship Troopers has Denise Richards. If you're ever in dire need of a respawn in extermination, just remember. On your feet, soldier! You can't sin for Denise Richards if you're dead, Rico. As this is an early access title, I'd like to spend some time suggesting new features and or content for future updates. Beginning with human dismemberment of course. This is something the developer has already confirmed to be coming during early access, and already something you can see occur with the bug enemies. But I would love to see a dismemberment system similar to Chivalry 2's, e.g. losing an arm forces you to only use pistol, or even just melee, and if your character loses a leg or both legs, you enter cruel. Are these entirely unrealistic requests? No. However, they do admittedly walk the line. When it comes to more realistic requests, I'd love to see the beetles added from the films along with the flying bugs, death traps dotted around the map that you can fall into, and throwing knives, purely because of one single badass scene from the movie. The enemy cannot push a button if you disable his hand. And most importantly in my eyes, underground infiltration missions, potentially a 4 player co-op experience, or solo experience with 3 AI teammates, since that's a highly requested thing from the community, and it would also be a fantastic way of introducing the smart bug into the game, as is exactly how the Roughnecks did when saving Captain Carmen. To add to the early access discussions, I have experienced a few technical bugs, nothing game breaking or even remotely excruciating outside of a single one. The one I am mainly annoyed by is the hilarity of the fact every single time I open the game, my loadout is reset to default, no matter the class I'm trying to use. And I'm the first person to stand up and say, this is fucked, this is not right, this is not cool, this is fucking bullshit. This is fucking bullshit. Outside of this technical bug, I've only seen a few minor ones that are honestly nothing bad for an early access title. After all, they mainly come down to people not being killed when the resupply drops down on them, like they should be, the building blueprint going invisible randomly when placing an object and then exiting in and out of building mode, along with the game randomly deciding that you have to wait for your party leader to start a match even though you aren't in one. In terms of performance, it's currently adequate on my PC with 32 gigs 
GB of RAM, and RTX 3070 and Ryzen 9 5900X at 1440p. There are random drops here and there, with the only time you'll really experience severe performance issues is during the final segment of missions, which is due to the insane amount of bugs the game throws at you during extraction. In consideration to the fact that this is an early access title, paired with the reality of this being a damn good looking horde title, I'm fairly impressed with performance, especially compared to AAA titles releasing recently. Overall, this is a brilliant horde based shooter with an excess of potential for the future and what seems to be a dedicated, healthy player base. Although only time will truly tell if the game manages to succeed through the treacherous early access cycle. And with that being said, we have finally come to the end of my video, so please do not forget the very basic fact that Service guarantees citizenship.